New CBS News polling shows the majority of Americans support stricter gun laws, though the parties are divided on what would make the U.S. safer. CBS News Elections and Surveys Director Anthony Salvanto is here now to break down what the latest polling shows. So, Anthony, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good to see you. So, the, your polling shows that the majority of Americans support stricter gun laws. Did they give you the reasons why? I mean, and what I found intriguing is that it's bipartisan. Yeah, and a lot of the policies are bipartisan. We'll get to that in a second. To answer your first question, Vlad, the reason you think something happens leads to the policy prescriptions you think will solve it. So you start there. So we ask, okay, why does the U.S. have more mass shootings than mm. other countries? And you got a top answer, people saying it was the availability of guns. But that's not the only answer that they gave. They also responded with, they thought there were more mental health issues, the influence of violence in the culture. So what you get out of that for context is a sense that people don't see any one reason, they might see a number of things, and then that leads you to some of the kinder, uh, some of the kind of prescriptions that they might, that they might have. Let me, let me point to the ones on guns for a second. The U.S. would be safer if no one or fewer people had guns. That's where the plurality comes out, but it's not overwhelming. And then you had this other mix of a quarter and there's a lot, of, a lot more Republicans in this group mm. who say it would be safer if more people had guns or even if everyone had guns. And there are some who say it just doesn't matter. That there isn't but can, I, can we just go back to that yeah. previous slide? Because, see, to me, when I look at uh, this one? a poll like that and I see yeah. uh, th those three issues, mental health, influence of violent movies and video games, and racial division, yeah. they exist in all the other countries that we're talking about, right? This is still the only country that has a level of violence. There are, there are vi people in Canada, Amory, because I play with them online, multiplayer, mm -hmm. play violent video games. Man, you get some extra time when you're I there. mean, I love video <laughs> games, right? So, I mean, and, and yeah. I grew up, I spent time in France. People in France play violent video games. There are people with mental health issues in countries all around the world. There is racial division in other countries around the world. What they do not have is the availability of more guns. So it just sort of tells you that when people the propaganda that people use to yeah. convince people that it's not the guns yeah. has an effect because it turns up in the poll. Well, well, let's talk about that and, and sort of the where you find the divide because you, you point out places yeah. where there's bipartisan agreement, but where do you find the divide? Yeah, and I think an important point to, to what you raised, Vlad, is these are people's perceptions, yeah. right? right? You're going to get sociologists, you're going to get public policy analysts who are going to show or try to show the impact of all of these things, but... Mm -hmm. This is where people start from an opinion standpoint mm. for whatever that, that has an effect. And then you look at one of the other things that drives opinions, of course, is partisanship to a point here. And the, the thing I want to I show is when you look at measures that ostensibly would impact the people who would buy the guns or get them, background checks, federal red flag laws, you get a lot more bipartisanship, right? Bipartisanship comes in background checks, a little bit more in red flag laws. But when you get to measures that would essentially go after the weapons themselves, in this case, the, the AR-15, you get a much lower response from Republicans in favor of that. Mm. So it's that, it's that, om that, that old line, you know, is it the person, is it the gun? Mm. There's a partisan division on that because the Democrats, among other measures, really focus on guns and gun control, but Republicans much less so, a little more on the people that would ostensibly get them. All right, you know? so uh, Speaker House, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said that the House is going to consider an assault weapons ban. Um, we suspect that it will likely fail in the Senate, but, but, but Anthony, as you know, Emory, you know, uh, when President Clinton first signed this bill into law in 1994, there was a drop in gun in mass shootings in this country and when that law was allowed to expire uh republicans allowed that law to expire in 2004 we saw a spike is yeah. that, am i wrong about that well look, look at what we've just seen vlad to your point uh in late may right after the buffalo tragedy it was 54 percent who said generally make gun laws more strict mm -hmm. and that number is up now to 60 wow. percent in in the wake of the texas tragedy okay so that's a rise the question, though, going forward is, does this level sustain? Mm. Does it go up from here? Sometimes after uh, unfortunate mass shootings, it's gone back down as it perhaps fades from the news. And then the other thing in a sort of larger sense, and this does speak to the politics, is this something we can do anything mm. about right. in general, right? 
So you get this big majority that says, yes, this can be prevented. Yes, if we really try. If so we really try. That's, that's yeah. possible. Right. What defines really tried? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a poll question, and we get into the particulars, and, you know, it's into the details. There is this quarter that, say, it might be something we unfortunately have to accept as part of a free society. So that view is out there. And uh, we did see some partisan splits in that, frankly. Uh, we saw four in ten uh, folks who ID as Republicans saying hmm. that that might be the case. Now, there's, there's a number of reasons that could be the case, right? You don't necessarily want to see the laws or you think it's something you have to accept. But this is where we start, right? Is this something we can do? And I think that is something to watch as it goes through the political process. I think that's refreshing because every time we cover another mass shooting, it kind of becomes more disheartening. And we go through this sort of same cycle, the same circus. You know, we listen to the politicians. They have some sort of powwow. But we're increasingly... It feels like we're starting to expect nothing, at least at the federal level. It's a little different on the state level, mm -hmm. right? And it's very patchworky, which is part of the problem, which is why you need federal legislation. Um, but it's it's heartening to see that people at least still believe that change can happen. Yeah, and, and again, it's a range of things. Because the public sees a range of things that aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, that's why they get frustrated with the political process mm -hmm. where it is often talked of as a straight trade-off for things that it can only be this or that, right? I mean, look at all the things that find a majority just right off the bat with better mental mm -hmm. health screening, more background checks. All of these things could, in the public mind, be done, mm -hmm. so then that's what they look for in the political process. The other thing I think is interesting that, you know, we've been covering the shooting in, in Philadelphia, but that shooting is very different than what happened in Uvalde. But it's still, it's a mass shooting. Sure. Um, but with perhaps different factors contributing to it. And these questions, these answers, I think to myself, are definitely in the wake of the shooting in Buffalo, the shooting in Uvalde, the shooting at a health center, these soft targets that we don't expect. There is a problem with gun violence that's always ha that mm -hmm. has been happening. And there are other factors that contribute to that, whether it's poverty or education and all this other stuff that we're really not talking about, you know, because these kind of these school shootings really sort of um, stun us into pressuring our lawmakers to do something, but there is kind of a, a, a beat, an underlying rhythm of gun violence that is always here. Yeah, and to that point, Anne-Marie, when we talk to parents, to this underlying mm -hmm. issue, we talk to parents, what are your kids worried about at school? Well, there are things that, you know, mm. for years, generations of kids, bullying, social yeah. pressures, okay. But gun violence is a majority, high. and that's it's starting high. to get comparable. That is yeah, that's really it's high to for get kids. comparable to, to these other things. And so that's where you start to measure what you're talking about, mm. that impact, that continual I mean, when you see gun violence, is almost the same as academic pressure, which is right. what a kid yeah. should only be right. thinking about. Know, you know, how well to do in school, not looking over the shoulder, make sure I don't get shot. Mm -hmm. right. That's remarkable. Man, Anthony, it's always interesting when you come by. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for the conversation, guys.